Welcome to African American Conservatives, the soul of the conservative movement. I'm your host, Marie Strader. Please go to anchor.fm forward slash A-A-C-O-N-S. There you can find our podcast. If you go to ACONS, A-A-C-O-N-S dot substack dot com, you can find our commentary. Our blog is there. You can find links to our social media channels as well as our podcast. And you can also find us at brightnews.com. Uh, brightnews.com. If you click on their YouTube channel, you will see a number of wonderful videos from a number of sources, ACONS being one of them. So while you're there, please click subscribe and you will be notified of all their content, including content from ACONS. But our show would not be complete without the man of the hour, DK. DK, come on in. There he is. Hola. Hello. Making an entrance. Como estas? Muy bien. ¿Y tú? Okay. I'm getting better at this techie stuff. I'm like the new uh, Elon Musk here. Well, I hope I'm I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't go that far. You're doing <laughs> well. Better. You're doing well. I'm having some technical uh, challenges myself tonight. Uh, Y'all know, well, you don't know until you see the show tomorrow, but uh, here in Central Texas, if you've heard anything about storms, well, not just Central Texas, the Midwest in general, um, is undergoing some ice storms, and so I'm having a few technical challenges, shall we say. But I'm safe and I'm warm and I didn't go without power, haven't gone without food. My cat, on the other hand, another story, she's not going without food, though. She doesn't have the food that she likes, but she's not without food. So, um, but we, we are all good and we're Poor all safe. Cat. And Poor mm, cat. She's got a lot of food. She's fine. Sad. She just won't eat it because she's persnickety like her mama. Sad. So, yeah, she's fine. How are you? How are things in Joyzy? I'm okay. Jersey is fine. You know, still the best state in the nation. No. <laughs> no. We had a weird start. Today. Not it's until, well, month. not, I was going to say, not until you have a, a professional sports team, which you do not in yeah. Joyzy. Yeah. But that that's a perfect segue into tonight's story, sir. Yeah, well, we used to have a... That's called an assist. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we used to have a professional basketball team. Used to. They moved to Brooklyn instead of Newark to. for some reason. Yeah. But... Speaking of basketball, there's a interesting story involving the Golden State Warriors that for once don't and doesn't involve uh, Draymond Green needing an opponent <laughs> or punching a teammate. Let me, see, let me see if I can pull it up on screen here. I think I should. I think I should take back what I said about being the new Elon Musk, but I'm gonna try. I it. think you should. <laughs> I think you should. It's a reach. Yeah, let me try it. There's that clicking we all love. It's live, live television. Okay, here it is. This oh, <coughs> I think this this is this is my uh, <coughs> this is my article for Substack. Uh, Pelosi and Biden, who watches The Watchmen? Oh, that just happens to be a promo for you. No, I clicked. That I was clicked smart. The, I clicked on the wrong <coughs> thing. Oh, I'm sorry. Let if me... you go to Acons dot substack dot com there you go that's what you're gonna see you're dk good. dk dk not only do you see our interview with alan dirtuous you get to read my latest uh well, i won't call it a masterpiece but it's it's a masterpiece <laughs> it's a master we didn't give you elon so we'll give you masterpiece well hopefully it was a, pretty brilliant hopefully it's enough to keep you entertained for the five minutes that it'll take you to read it it's, well, it might take you a little bit longer to read. <laughs> I edit. I edit you, so I know it's Three come minutes. long. But okay. it's it's very informative, and I think there's enough there that will leave people saying, "Huh? Why aren't they and undergoing is, some sort of uh, legal challenge?" Well, because they're above the law, which which is what happens when you when you write the law. We maybe we'll talk about talk about this a little bit more today, but let's go straight to uh, your three point specialist and uh, your fifty million dollar warrior. Okay, I'm gonna show this video. This explain most of it. I 
think we should do some layups or shoot arounds while we're waiting. We could tell some jokes. No? Oh, here we go. I hear something. You gotta click tabs, though. I don't see it, DK. You don't see it? Let me try it again. Don't see it? Don't hear it. I will try it again. All right, Elon. <laughs> Did you swap? Oh, don't sing. Did you, <laughs> Did you swap over tabs? No, let me see. Uh, I don't know what I did wrong. Let me try it again. Okay. What do you see now? Me and you. Okay. Maybe we should set the story up. We can this do that while we're waiting. Oh, you're... We could. Okay, here it is. Okay, I'm getting better. Kids live in a nation that is safe, happy, healthy, and fair. And so this election. We're voting for Joe Biden. And he is coming out very clear that he is opposed to the low income housing development. Entire White House, White House staff, thank y'all for uh, welcoming us here. Steph Curry and his championship Golden State Warriors got a warm welcome at the Biden White House less than two weeks ago. And right after he talked about skipping a similar visit during the presidency of Donald Trump. The vibe is obviously different in the sense of, you know, accepting people from different different walks, different backgrounds, and <laughs> actually walking that walk. But the MVP and his wife are not so welcoming of a three-story townhouse project planned for this property. It was apparently a literal case of NIMBY. In a letter to the city of Atherton, Steph and Aisha Curry wrote, we hesitate to add to the not in our backyard rhetoric, but we wanted to send a note before today's meeting. Safety and privacy for us and our kids continues to be our top priority. And one of the biggest reasons we chose Atherton as home. State law requires all cities to offer more affordable housing. So zoning for a higher density project is being considered at a special city council meeting. And this is just one of the ways that Atherton is proposing to do that. Just one of the parcels where they're thinking we're going to essentially change it from what it currently is now, which is one mansion per acre to 20 homes per acre, potentially. Atherton is... And we're back. Mm. So what do you, what's your reaction so far? Well, I have a lot of reactions. As you know, I hail from California, so I am uh, quite familiar with the Golden State Warriors. I've uh, been to a number of games. I don't think I've seen Steph play uh, in person, but been to a number of games uh, when they were at the Coliseum before they moved into San Francisco proper. Uh, having lived in the Bay Area, particularly uh, in San Francisco and then in the South Bay, I am quite familiar with Atherton. Atherton is, uh, if not the most expensive place to live in California, it may be the most expensive place in the nation. And it is well known for being quite the enclave for the rich and the famous. Um, and so already you've got a situation where, uh, you know, and I don't begrudge anybody their wealth, their talent, whatever, not at all. Um, and I certainly understand privacy. I will tell you this, not far from Atherton, in fact, a stone's throw is Menlo Park, and uh, also, which is also kind of a high end enclave, um, and Palo Alto. And in Palo Alto, my son used to play in a couple of bands and he would have band practice every Friday. And we would go to our friend's house and practice in their detached garage. Uh, and uh, 
just less than a mile. In fact, it was a couple of blocks. It was within walking distance. Uh, someone by the name of Mark Zuckerberg uh, had a house and I would drive past there and the little guy that he had uh, inside, uh, there was a gate, not a gate, but he had a, a gatekeeper, if you will, that sat in the car outside uh, as security. Uh, and then he bought up the rest of the houses on that block. Why did he buy up the rest of the houses on that block? Because he wanted privacy. And then, of course, he got married to Priscilla Chan, uh, Chen, and they have a baby now, Priscilla Chan, uh, and they have a child now, a couple of kids. Um, and so I understand the privacy aspect. The part that drives me a little crazy is how philanthropic they are um, and how they want to do everything for the city of Oakland and the disadvantaged, uh, so say, as long as it's not the disadvantaged in their neighborhood, which reeks a little bit of Martha's vineyardism uh, of President Biden, where, you know, oh, yeah, let those illegal immigrants come all over the border in Texas and New Mexico and Arizona, uh, you know, and, and whatever, but don't have them in Martha's Vineyard uh kind of thing and so that bothers me um because it's just the population that they are claiming to want to serve um and also i'm going to be really forthright and i don't think this is anything that um, anybody who watches us regularly doesn't know i grew up in public housing and so i'm quite offended by the fact that just because someone lives in public housing or low income housing, they are undesirable neighbors. Um, yeah, okay, I will grant you that in my public housing unit, there were people that did do some pretty bad things. They didn't keep up the place. The place I'm did sure. smell like- I'm sure I'm there sure. are people who live in those $30 million mansions who are undesirable as well. Oh, like Hunter Biden that paid $49 million <laughs> a month or $49,000 a month? Oops, yeah. did that come out of my mouth? Did I say that publicly? I'm just saying there are people who are honest, hardworking people, and that's classist. And I have a problem with classism. That's probably next to racism, my biggest peeve, or maybe they're the same peeve kind of tied together into two different similar uh, parallel uh, trajectories, if you will. But to assume that everyone who lives in, in low income housing or subsidized housing is bad in some way, because I'll tell you this, one of the problems that I had growing up in public housing didn't have a lot of friends that wanted to come. Uh, I used to go to a lot of affluent schools because as I've mentioned, I was in the gifted program and they were all at experimental schools in the seventies. So a lot of really wealthy kids. And, and I always felt like the odd kid cause I knew where I came from and I knew that I was different and I didn't ever feel welcome or, that I was on the same level um, as other kids. I always knew that I was different. Um, and so to feel in some way that because my mother was a hardworking woman, single mother who had to provide for me and didn't have the advantages of a two parent home or the affluence that some of my friends had, that in some way that made her a degenerate person or a bad person or um, a morally ambiguous person or whatever you want to say, um, I think is false equivalence. And so, yes, there were people um, that hustled in my neighborhood. There were people who uh, ran a den of ill repute out of their homes. There were people that were crack dealers and drug dealers and those kinds of things. But there were also a lot of hardworking families, a lot of single moms. You know, we talked about the scourge of fatherlessness. And that was something that I have personal experience with. I have a lot of friends who turned out quite well, thank you, um, who just had the uh, bad fortune, if you will, to be in that uh, demographic of single parents. So for Aisha Curry and Steph Curry, with all of their wealth to kind of make a blanket statement about people who are hardworking. Um, and I'm not saying everybody, like I said, there are some people that, that um, don't take it, uh, that take it for granted and take it lightly and don't keep up their properties or whatever, keep up the property that they rent or whatever. 
But also, I want to say this. Um, some of the places that they create that are low-income housing um, are very different and uh, look like they are public housing um, and aren't really all that special to keep up to begin with. I'm not saying you shouldn't, but I'm just saying, again, like I felt with my friends, um, you feel different and you feel kind of a brand, if you will, a mark on you, if you will. And so I guess I got a little head up about the story because I do like the Warriors and I do think that they do a lot of stuff for the community. And I do appreciate, I know a lot of people that have been on the subway with them on BART uh, that have met them and said, you know, they're really great guys. They take the subway after the game, like everybody else. They don't pull airs like that. Um, and I understand when you have young kids, the desire, you're a homeowner, I'm a homeowner. Um, you know, I, I was a little nervous about who our neighbors might be only in the case of like yippy yappy dogs or something like that. You know, that's a pet peeve that I have. I feel like if you pay the money, you should have, but that again is more of a privacy issue than a riffraff kind of issue. And that's what I heard. And, sure. and that may be the, the ghetto girl in me. I I've told you quite often that, mm -hmm. um, you could take the girl out of the ghetto, but you can't, or you could take the, yeah, you could take the girl out of the ghetto, but you can't take the ghetto out of the girl. I do sometimes feel that mark. And I still, um, that little girl is in there and she's hurt. And uh, so when I heard this story, it, it did bother me on that level. Well, in their defense, I'll, I would say that they never said that it's a, you don't it's have a, to. It's a matter of uh, riffraff you know, lowering the proper value, property values. We do know someone, I don't know if I should They said it. privacy and safety. Yeah, privacy and safety. Course, so privacy, I got. I, I, privacy, I give you. But safety, why would you be unsafe? Yeah, because he's a celebrity, maybe. I don't know. Well, uh, then hire some more guards. Oh, that would be the solution for the border, too, wouldn't it? Hmm. Oh, my. We've solved this is, it. This is related to the border problem. Um, but I don't think it's... He may have been thinking it because I know many people in his position would think that. We we have a a mutual friend who very famously not too long ago talked about blacks destroying neighborhoods, how blacks don't take care of their properties, they leave garbage everywhere, they make a mess. I don't know that we're mutual friends per se, <laughs> but I know who you're talking about. Yeah, I've well, never met this person. In we're person. definitely not friends, but. Yeah. Uh, I think I know who you. Wait, 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 wait. He's it's someone one or two we know. people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, never mind. He's gotcha. someone we know. Yes, it is someone we know. That we who. who yeah, no, 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 no. I'm not Hopefully gonna not out that person. I'm not gonna <laughs> so any, out that person. So anyway, well, if you put it on Twitter, I don't know. Well, who, yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. But you're or, right. in a, or in a book or something. I don't know. Yeah. So I don't think Curry is making that argument, even but though. But he said safety. I presume he believes that, but. So just so I can be clear, do you think that they should be allowed to build a housing project behind his $30 million mansion or- First of all, it is called low income housing. Yeah. And if the median income in Atherton is, you know, in the millions, low income in Atherton is, you know, a couple hundred thousand a year, you know? So, I mean, that's what it takes to live in the Bay Area. I mean, right before we left to move to Texas, Google had bought up a tract of land because, as I said, the subway, BART, goes all the way down to the South Bay now. Um, and so uh, property values kind of went up, and one of the stations is right near Google Land. And so Google bought it all up. Um, and so the housing there, they were saying, like, you know, the median income you need to have just to buy a crappy house in a uh, in a bad location this is near san jose state where um a lot of uh low income people live um and you know the houses are not as well kept as some of the other houses or have gates on them uh, and bars on the window and that kind of thing um and so uh houses in that neighborhood were selling for high one million or low 2 million when I left California. So to live in Atherton, I don't know what their qualification for low income would be, but they called it low income housing. I just want to make that clear because they didn't say project. I'm saying project, you're saying project, but they just said that they were 
three level townhomes. Right. That's right. nicer than my apartment. I my roach filled in part apartment in uh, the Western edition of San Francisco. Well, I used to live in a, a project that was definitely a project. It was not a three level townhome. No. <laughs> no. The people, the people are basically the same. The issue itself is basically the same, whether it's a three level townhome or, or, or one of those tenement buildings I used to live in. It's, um, it's not so much about the people who live in these low income housing being bad people. It's a matter of um, um, property rights. And his- uh, Then why is he getting blowback? Why did this blow up on social media then? Because, they, because they're laughing at him because he voted for the people who made these things possible. But you and I, we had a guest on our show way back, way back. I think 2000 and it was at least 10 years ago. Uh, his name is Stanley Kurtz, national review writer who, who wrote about this subject in great detail. So I happened to know a little bit about it from then because I found a lot of things he said memorable. The, the root of this is was um, what occurred during the Obama years. He instituted a, a project called the uh, Affordable Further Furthering Fair Housing. I think that was 2011 or so. Affordable Furthering Fair Housing. <clears throat> Sorry. And what this does basically is that it mandates that uh, areas that are zoned for one family housing not $30 million matching, the kind of housing we live in, it mandates that they be required to take a certain percentage of um, low income uh, residents, mm -hmm. you know, um, as, as a means of what they consider to be wealth redistribution. But it's, it's basically the same Marxist uh, philosophy that they're the haves and the have nots. Uh, the suburbs are portrayed as something where people are elitist. They see a lot of racial segregation and economic inequality associated with the suburbs. They think they can put an end to that by having the people who live in the inner city moved out to the suburbs. And basically, they either want the people who live in the suburbs to be in a more urban environment or the people who live in the urban environment to be in the more suburban environment. They want equality. And and what you mentioned before with the illegals is, is very similar. It's a very similar argument. They think that America is so rich, we're so privileged, we're so classist, that why should we have borders stopping the poorest people of Latin America and indeed all over the world from coming to our border and sharing our wealth? We shouldn't be we shouldn't be richer than these people. They should be on our level. So let's let them all in. It's the same argument basically as, as in the suburbs. Why should we live in our nice one family homes with the front, with the backyards and the, and the swimming pools and the nice schools while the people are living in tenements, basically. And I have an issue with that though, but here's the thing, you know, it's a wonderful life, right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, We've got, uh, why am I trying to say Henry Fonda? It's not Henry Fonda, it's Jimmy Stewart. Jimmy Stewart standing up to Potter saying, you know, oh, this riffraff that you're talking about, is it wrong for them to want to live and bathe or, or um, work and bathe and live and die in a couple of decent rooms and a bath? Um, so I don't think of it as this wealth redistribution per se. I mean, I would have given anything to li to move out of that neighborhood. It was a terrible neighborhood. It was a crime-ridden neighborhood. Uh, you know, it's so funny because later on, I went to go take care of my aunt and still live there um, to give my mom a respite because she and my aunt lived together. Um, and so, you know, Sebastian, who had a pretty suburban upbringing, you know, would kind of be ducking. Uh, sorry to call you out. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but it's the truth. He would hear like Uzis and stuff like that. And you know, he would duck. I just didn't even notice it because it was just the sound of my neighborhood, you know? Um, and so I couldn't wait to get out of that neighborhood. Uh, so I don't think it, I, I would have done anything 
to get out of there. I would have applied for those for those three bedroom townhomes. Absolutely, I would have. Well, I don't begrudge anyone from wanting to move out of that environment. My father took me out of that environment when I was a young young teen. Um, I think uh, you worked your way out of that environment. Um, and most people or many people who live in these one family homes are people who through their own hard work uh, uh, grew up, um, climbed up the economic ladder to have a one family home. It's, the, it's called the American dream. Yes. The white picket fence. Yes. You work hard, you work hard, you pay your taxes to stay out of, stay out of problem with the police. You uh, stay in school, you, you save your money, you get the one family home with the, with the dog running across the front lawn. This no is dog. This is something that the Obamas particularly, but it's not just the Obamas, you know, cause the genius of Barack Obama was that he was able to mainstream a lot of ideas that were previously relegated to Marxist uh, grad school discussions. He took this idea that the suburbs are bad, they're bad for black people, they're bad for poor people, it's not fair. And, and he was able to make it a national movement. Now you're seeing cities all over the country doing what they're doing in Atherton, which is they're building these low income housings next to people who don't want it. They're changed into law to reverse gentrify neighborhoods. And but here's the thing, if property taxes fund our school, and I've said that I dislike that system of funding, you know, we talked about a few women who were arrested because they lied about the zip code that their kids lived in to put them in a better school. Um, I don't know if the Currys send their kids to a private shishi school that you have to pay for, or if they go to a public school. But if they go to a public school, it's probably a lot better of a public school than the one down the street from the project I lived in or the one that you lived in. So I also don't see that as an issue where if a parent is seeking a better outcome for their children and a better school, because we know that California schools are bankrupt and they're failing their children. So I, 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 don't, I don't see that either. I'm not blaming anyone who wants to leave Compton and move to Atherton. I'm blaming the laws that require communities like Atherton to build housing for people who live in Compton. But how else would they afford it? They don't, I don't have an extra 30 million laying around you. It may not be before at Atherton, but if, it was like I was saying, if they, they, uh, they can achieve the American dream through hard work, through saving, saving their money, <coughs> not in California, you're, you're I mean, unless you move out of California. Well, yeah. And that's, yeah. And that's the thing. which took a lot of money to do, by the way. And that's the thing. That's what counters so much <clears throat> that that's what counters so much of the Obama slash Marxist argument that the suburbs are not elitist uh, and you, or not racist. Look at the black community. Um, now, today, you're seeing black people leave their leave cities in droves. I mean, there was a story in the New York Times, I think, two days ago, um, about the black families leaving New York, and they're not moving to Atherton, of course, but they're moving to uh, suburbs, especially down south, and that's a continuation of what economists have been noticing at least since 1990. So that completely disputes the the argument that. There's some sort of barrier keeping low income people from becoming at least middle income people, keeping people from living in projects and living in one family homes. Like I said, you get a good job, you get the mortgage, you get the one family home. It doesn't have to be Atherton, but you're moving up the ladder. Maybe your kids are living Atherton. Yeah, but it takes it takes a good maybe fifteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 saved up to move out of California. That's just moving costs. That's just moving costs. That's like first and last month rent or a down payment on a house. You know, there's a lot of money you have to put up front to buy a house. Uh, and so I, and the rental to, to a U-Haul or whatever it is, um, it's quite a bit of chunk of change. It's not quite so easy, I'm gonna say. 
it's definitely not easy and not everyone will ever be able to do it um but it's fair you know it's, it's the, the same set of rules for everyone that's what makes it uh, american and my my over my primary objection is is that it's a matter of rights you know if you have the means to buy property you have rights to that property it shouldn't be up to the federal or the state or the city government to tell you that no marie you're living too well it's like we just saw in the video i just played that that little guy he says from the san mateo housing council who this and he has the smile on his face he's deciding that you know we decided that uh, atherton will no longer be one mansion per acre now we're going to make it eight eight no oh, i think it's an eight to twenty homes per acre i mean what gives them to write to do that if someone like steph curly steph curry stop uh, <laughs> if someone like steph curry has the means to afford a whole acre to himself what gives him the city councilman <laughs> the right to decide this is too much for you, Mr. Curry. I don't but care. I don't, but I don't necessarily know that it's that. I, I, mean, say, here's the thing. I just want to say that he, this councilman does not have the right to treat an American in that fashion. If he, if Curry has the means to buy one acre or 10 acres and he's paying his taxes on it and he's doing everything the legal way, he should not be subject to the whims of a government who decides that he has too much. and. And my, my only other point on that is Steph Curry will never be LeBron James. And I'll stop. Leave. Oh, no, yeah, I stop. Want... He's going to, he's totally going to be in the Hall of Fame before LeBron James, whining, crying. Because LeBron James would just go out in his front yard and start, oh, I don't want them for neighbors. I don't want them for neighbors. Okay. Um, but anyway, be that as it may. Here's the mm -hmm. thing Do you get a choice of who your neighbors are? You don't. If you buy a house, Somebody owns the house over here and somebody owns the house over here. And you don't get to say, well, I want you for a neighbor. I don't want you for a neighbor. You've got a yippy yappy dog. We have people that had yippy yappy dog on both sides. What this is in California. Thankfully we moved, but I'm just saying, you know, what if somebody moves in next door that has a yippy yappy dog? I can make the choice to guess what? Sell my house if I want to. My husband, as you know, and I'm going to out you also. You are aficionados of true crime. And you know, fear thy neighbor. You see that all the time. I mean, you get a nutcase that moves in next door. You don't have any control over that. You only own your house. You don't own the rest of the city. So you can't just say, oh, well, Steph Curry can't say who his neighbors are going to be. You can't say who your neighbors are going to be. I can't say who my neighbors are going to be. If I, if the house for sale, the house next door goes up for sale, I pray that it's somebody that doesn't have a yippy yappy dog. I pray that it's not somebody that ends up on, you know, fear thy neighbor. But the fact of the matter is, you don't have a choice over that. So Steph Curry and Aisha Curry, move. Well, they had a, they had a choice until not too long ago before Obama and other people like him, like-minded politicians, took it upon themselves to decide that they don't have a right to have a choice of what their neighbors should be. I mean, if you're paying that kind of money, you, there's an assumption that the people around you are paying similar amounts of money for their property. And, and if you have $30 million, you have a choice about where you live. Yeah, and I'm going to guarantee you the end of this story is we may see them move if this goes through. We will see them move because they sure won't he, have a choice. I'm sure he will move, but he shouldn't be forced. He shouldn't be forced to move. He has a right to his property. He has a low income right. people have a right to live in a better neighborhood than where most of our tenements are located. I'm not saying he doesn't have a right to privacy. Why, do they, why do they have the a right, right to, to live in better neighborhoods? They have a right to have their neighborhoods improved. Of course, they have well, a right. Who's to say yeah. they won't be improved? They have a That's right what to, I'm saying. Who's right to say to that they will not be improved? Who's to say that they're going to have janky neighbors? This, that's that's where I'm insulted and offended. Low income people have a right to have their uh, schools improved. They have, they have a right to better police. They have a right to better services. Even Which the they will have in Steph right Curry's neighborhood in spades. They do not have a right to 
be moved to Atherton? They don't. No, they don't. Well, where, where would they get that right from? You build housing in communities. And there are things that you have to meet in terms of income. There are things that you have to meet in terms of sometimes credit scores. It, there's a number of things, a number of criteria that you have to meet to have. It's called below market rent, actually, is what it's called. To be able to a, a below market housing, you have to meet a number of criteria. And so, you know, some people are going to be vetted, uh, I, you know, and I'm not being crazy, crazy about this, but just the blanket assumption that these are bad people or that they're going to rip up the neighborhood somehow. I don't make lower that, the property values. I don't make that assumption they don't drink at tea. all. You know, I don't know. But as we mentioned, you and I both came from that environment and neither one of us are bad people. I mean, I'm a, I'm a good person. You're okay. You know, but <laughs> I have my moments. I have my moments. <laughs> you have your, your moments of being a good moments. person. You know, every every few days you do something nice. Every I, few days, I appreciate that. Tomorrow but, is not going to be a good day for you. I'm just going to say it. Okay. You yeah. outed me on 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 camera, so. Oh my goodness. You'll get a little payback, maybe. Okay. Well, a little lump of coal in your so stocking. Okay. No, I'm just. Uh, I don't want to make it. Um, any prejudice remarks against people in, in low, low income uh, environments. I know uh, there are people I can relate to, people I know. I've grew up in low income environments. I lived in tenement buildings. And there, there are a lot of good people. And this would be undoubtedly great for a lot of them. You know, great for their children who, who can go to better schools. But this is not a right they have. The rights belong to the property owners. In, in this country, you have a and right. And property to owners live. have the right to build wherever they want to build. In this country, you have a right to life, liberty, and property. I mean, that was that was in the very original. And uh, nobody is taking away Steph Curry's property from him. He can build whatever he wants to build. He can build privacy walls. He can make his walls as high as he wants to. He can put in all kinds of shrubbery. He can. I'm sure he's got guards. I don't think he just, I mean, you know, I'm sure there's some kind of security that he has, or at least security alarms, some kind of monitoring system. You know, you, you pay a little bit more, maybe. He won't go broke if he has to buy, you know, no, he's making an extra 50, tier. I think he's making 50 million a year. Yeah. He's worth about 200 million, I think. Yeah. So he can just buy the next tier up on his security system. He absolutely could, but he shouldn't yeah. have. To. Government should not be interfering in people's property rights in this in this matter. And no one's interfering with his property rights. He they still are. gets if to they, own his building, house. If they're building low income housing, See, right next here's to here's where I have an issue. What if they built a zoo by line. his house? Or what if they built uh, an amusement park by his house? Let's say that, and not low income housing, because if you build. Um, you know, uh, an amusement park, there's going to be traffic issues. Uh, there's going to be noise issues that I can understand. Okay. That I get because you buy uh, quiet and there are some things that you buy. Uh, so I don't have an issue necessarily with that, but just the assumption that because it's low income housing, what if it was just a townhome community for 55 and older? Would that be okay? Steph and Aisha Curry? I'm just asking the questions. Would that then be okay? But it's the low income. You got to hear the soft bigotry in that. I'm just saying, that's all I'm asking for is people to hear that point. It sounds offensive. Well, and so it, you just need to think about that. It could be low income. It could be a senior citizen's uh, development. It could be a McDonald's. You have a right if you live, if you're part of a community, you have a right to object to what's being created. And they did. Created they the sent a letter to the city council, which is what I would do if was, I had was, a neighbor yes. that was violating code all over the place and was janking up the yard. And in fact, when we first moved in, we had some neighbors that they moved like a couple months after, but they had all kinds of clinky clanky stuff in their yard, you know? 
Um, and we still bought the house because it was a nice house. It was a good price, um, but they weren't noisy neighbors. I mean, we got the intel. We got the 911 from the people that owned this house before we did. But I'm just saying, you know, you go through the proper channels then. If, for example, they do build this low income housing and people move in, there are noise ordinances. There are garbage ordinances. There are other kinds of ordinances that if anybody breaks them, they have legal recourse. But to make the blanket assumption that because it's low income housing, riffraff is going to come in the neighborhood and lower your property values. I don't know who's making think, that assumption. Well, because they use the word safety. Safety. That 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 has a whole set of assumptions built in. I'm just saying. So we're not going to agree on this one. So we're not going to agree. I'm just wondering if these are your views, then why are you opposed to uh, having an open border? I mean, people who live in, let's say, Tijuana, they have a much better life if they were moved to because Houston. they are not American citizens, and they did not. What did I just say? Legal recourse. Okay. That's not their fault. You can claim asylum. It's not their fault that they are not. That's American too bad. They're I'm just saying. They're, but there, there are ways to get into this country, and I don't mean the past. I'm saying that they're poor people, just like people who live in. You know, yes, and, but if and, I were to apply for low-income housing, I would have to fill out paperwork. I would even have to show a picture ID. Oh, well, look, well, look, look, the current that's government. That illegal people don't know how to do. Well, the, the current government can very reasonably decide that the people who live in the... But the fact of the, the matter project, is, as it stands, currently, they come in and they are not required to fill out any paperwork. They are not to, are required to show proof of vaccine. They're not required to do anything. People who apply for below market housing have to meet a set of strict criterion and they have to show proof of a certain amount of income. As I said, I lived in low income housing. I don't know how it worked in Joyzy or wherever you were living, but every year we had to get recertified and they had to look at my mother's pay stubs to make sure that she met the income requirements. So there are certain things that you have to do in order to meet the requirements for this below market housing. It's not just, hey, poor people, ding, 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 ring a bell, come on, come get it. No, there are requirements that you have to meet. And so I'm saying, that that is not the case at our poorest border. You're talking about an arbitrary set of rules that, that can change the next election. There's no um, there's no requirement that people who live in projects of Asia, uh, Mexico, Africa, Europe, they come through the southern border, they come for a better life, same as the people. And they can apply to get a visa. They can apply to become a citizen. They can apply you're, you're, you're for talking, asylum. You're talking about arbitrary laws, though, that could be changed. That are so being, are these not arbitrary laws? You could make a law that says, hey, live in Atherton, or hey, don't live in Atherton. But the fact of the matter is, Steph mm -hmm. and Aisha Curry have the right to legal redress, and they took that. They said to the city council, we don't want riffraff living in our backyard. They never they never said riffraff. That's raff. the code because they said safety. Well, that's that's something you're reading into. Um, well, why wouldn't know, it be safe? It, make, Atherton is one of the safest cities in America. You can why make, wouldn't it be safe? They're safe now, are they not? You can make it you can make it so that are every, they not everyone, safe now? I'm sure they are. Okay, so it. the only thing that makes them question whether they would remain safe is the fact that low income housing is being built behind their house. I don't know if anything would, else, if they said that there was anything would, else that was going to be built. I don't would, know what the other would likely, suggestions Which would like, likely make it less safe if you live in a more congested environment. The, the more congested environment is going to be less safe, especially if you have a huge disparity in wealth between one the one neighbor and the next neighbor. Of course, of course, it's going to be less safe. It's and I'm be, not saying that there are some safe. people that could it's move in be, that might it's have be more congested. The schools aren't going to be as good, especially if you 
extend what I'm saying. The to, schools are going to be the same schools as they are now, schools, unless they build some tenement schools for the riffraffy kids the that schools, move in. The schools won't be as good, especially if you make it uh, what I was saying about illegals, because there's going to be language problems. So language be, problems. Oh, so not only are they low income, but now they're not going to speak English. Uh, okay. Again, again, I'm talking We're about. We're not going to agree on this. Again, I'm, I'm talking about. Agree on I'm, this, I'm, right? You're talking about people who live in places like Compton. I'm talking about illegal immigrants. They come. They come to communities. They make it more congested. They make it less safe. And they make the schools. But we're not talking about people that are coming over the border going to live behind uh, Aisha and Steph. But my argument is is that it's a very similar argument between. It's not a similar argument. It's completely different. In your mind, but not in mine. Because because the root of both arguments is the same. It's It's artificial wealth redistribution. It's deciding that people over here have too much. I, as the. As a city councilman, I'm going to force you to share what you have with other people who who I've decided arbitrarily don't have enough. I don't like California. I think California has a lot of problems. And I think their policies are pretty goofy. I think their schools are crappy. And I think there's a lot of craziness that goes on in California. But as I said, I am not going to begrudge a whole class of people. There are some people who fit in that class that I would say are of concern um, to Aisha and to Steph. But here's the thing that, as you pointed out, Hunter Biden was a crack smoking prostitute patronizing person, and he's pretty wealthy. I wouldn't want him moving behind my house either. So I'm just saying that, you know, that, that we can agree on. This is what flip. Maybe we need to stop there. <laughs> this is what, I don't want to read. I want to read what flip said. Just want to read what Flip says because he's been such a good friend to us. Yes, he, says, he has. Enjoying the spirited debate. I'm with DK on this one. Oh, no. Take Flip off. The <laughs> Take him off that screen. I just wanted to Flip, read that part. Flip, you and I were friends. <laughs> you and I were friends. How much is he paying you to say that, Flip? Come on. No, we were friends. I hear what you're saying, but I don't agree that it's 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 apples and oranges. I just don't if we want to have an apples and apples discussion, we can. But I believe in I believe in poor people having the opportunity to move up the economic ladder. I just don't believe in artificial wealth redistribution, and I'll leave it. I don't that. believe in our artificial wealth dis- distribution either. I just don't think this is that particular thing that. You just spent a half hour arguing for order. No, I didn't. Otherwise, I would have said I'm arguing for wealth redistribution, well, and I'm that's not. I heard. Wealth well, that's what you, you need to get your hearing checked. I've been telling okay. you that. I'll yes. Check, I'll check the volume on my computer. Yes, you Maybe do that. Weren't you just telling me before we got on that you couldn't see and you couldn't hear? I don't know. I thought you were saying something along those lines. All right. So there you have it. We've got Marie. This is DK. Thanking you for being here tonight. Please be sure, please be sure that you go to anchor.fm forward slash A-A-C-O-N-S where you can hear a lot more of this sort of discussion. In fact, I will tell you tomorrow our new episode drops of the Acons podcast. And because of the weather issues here in the Midwest, uh, our guest was not able to join us. So you get a whole hour of DK and I doing just this sort of thing. We have three, count on three stories that we talk about tomorrow. <laughs> there, we don't have this much disparity of, of of where we disagree on these three. These three well, we're pretty three. These three we pretty much agree. We have we have some good uh, opinions, both of us points that we make. But you know we don't disagree as widely on on those issues as we do. But do go to anchor.fm forward slash a a c o n s and uh, subscribe to our podcast. We're on a number of platforms. Spotify is the main one, but you can. Get us on Apple Podcast or Google Play or whatever you want. Um, and so we're there. Uh, we're also at brightnews.com. Our friends at Bright News are amazing. Um, and so do be sure to go to brightnews.com and uh, get on the YouTube channel that they have and subscribe to that YouTube channel. You'll get all of the videos on that channel, not just Acons. If you want to get just Acons, go to acons.substack.com. And all of our social media is up there. And you will have the link to our 
YouTube channel, which is at ACONS. It's youtube.com forward slash at A-A-C-O-N-S. And you can subscribe there. We hope you will. Until then, uh, this is African American Conservatives, the soul of the conservative movement, telling you, bidding you, saying good night. And Steph Curry will never be LeBron James. Oh, stop. <laughs> Steph Curry, Steph Curry is so oh my good goodness. at basketball. Okay, He's really good. Have a good night. All right. Good night. Bye. Bye.